Hello everyone, welcome back to the next episode of Star Trek Adventures Deep Space 15, aka Cerberus Station. Where the ca we'll just get right into it with the Captain's Log. Alright. Captain's Log, Stardate 83329.8. With the assistance of Starfleet Intelligence, Ambassador Klathov has been abducted by the Cardassian Protectorate Agency. While Deimos has filed several complaints, there isn't much I can do considering the information surrounding the time periods mentioned is minimal at best. I'd help more if I could, but considering Starfleet intelligence is involved, my hands are pretty much tied in the matter. In other news, Admiral Zier is coming to inspect the Beta-3 catapult facility, but she hasn't given me much information as to why the visit is being made. The station's promenade is, however, coming together quite well. The new salon and fine clothing boutique set to Stunning has seen many patrons since its recent opening, and the Aldous Crawford Memorial Theater has been coming along well, with its first performance set to be in the next month or so. We'll be having a theater troupe come in to perform the classic musical Company. Maybe at some point we can have Admiral Riker come in and give one of his favorite, eh, one of his famous trombone concerts at some point. End log. Well, on that note, our very first scene is going to be in the newly commissioned and soon to be fully operational Aldous Crawford Memorial Theater, where, barring any sort of actual theater performance, you are all being subjected, I should say, to the theater manager's choice production of 12 Angry Klingons. <laughs> a uh, theatrical and somewhat satirical look at Klingon Chancellor politics of the early 22nd, or of the Klingons in the early 20, 22nd century. It shows a rise to power, a change of leadership, some laughs were had along the way, senior staff, and choice. Um, and choice guests were invited to the show. It ends with a large, with the new chancellor bellowing a Klingon opera, which, even though it's holographic, rattles the walls and th threatens the over soundproofing that is already in place. There, there is much applause as the curtains finally drop. And the new theater manager steps forward. One Catherine Sigrist. She smiles, bows, waves her hand, and the applause ceases. Why, thank you, she says. And even though she is on the stage, several rows in front of you, the, um, ah, the theater's... Uh, technical systems are able to pick up the voice and amplify it perfectly across all 200 seats, even though most are currently empty. I know, Ald I know Aldous Crawford, the, for whom this theater is named after, my brother, the captain's father, and she sort of gives a coy nod to the captain, would have greatly enjoyed seeing this theater. He always had a hand in it. And she sort of pauses and lets the lets her words echo. And without further ado, I give you the man who this theater is named after. Computer, host program. There is a materialization as a man in his standing roughly six foot tall and bearing a striking semblance to Captain Crawford steps out on t from stage left. He smiles and chuckles. Yes, he certainly would have, and I am a poor substitute for what he could have been, but alas, I am, I am here in his image and his memory. I would like to declare the theater open for business, and as we are currently lacking a professional theater troupe, I shall inquire if there are any amongst the local crew or civilians who wish to put on a, a show. Please, 
keep an eye out keep an eye open and Rami will be sure to deliver the most updated schedule to those who are interested well we can certainly make sure that all the shows that take uh, place in the theater are broadcast across the station we have plenty of computer consoles that can flash up information about the station he smiles warmly anything to get more t anything to keep life in the uh, theater they said that it has been dying since the 20th century i still would like to prove them wrong <laughs> i don't think we'll have any problem there if nothing else the civilians of the station i'm sure would rather enjoy being able to show off some uh, talent. It was a pleasure. I look forward to seeing the next show. Where What's it, what's the next show called, uh, Miss... or Catherine? Catherine checks her notes. Ah, uh, yes. It is Casablanca, as done in Vulcan Haiku. Please, come... Please return for tomorrow at at uh, twelve ah, at fourteen hundred hours. We will do an encore at eighteen hundred for those getting off Alpha Shift. Let's keep and, that in mind. And with that, they will both saunter off stage, chatting quietly as if sharing an inside joke. Um. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm a definitely a fan of the Klingon opera, but Vulcan haiku. I think I'm gonna have to pass on the Casablanca. That could still be interesting, Lieutenant Commander. I mean, yeah, I won't doubt you on that one. I've seen plenty of cultures. Maybe I'll give it a shot tomorrow, but we'll we'll have to see how everything goes with this week's engineering shake-up. I'm trying to get everybody a little more used to these emergencies that show up, especially after the little incident we just decided to have with the Graviton Catapult. Yeah, that certainly is interesting. Do you have any more information as to why the Admiral's here? She gave me pretty much nothing. I'm a 70-year-old lieutenant commander. I don't get admirals talking to me very much, Captain. No, well, just thought it could have been an engineering problem of sorts. I've had one admiral in my senior career, and I think that was Admiral Riker actually paid an interest to anything I said, probably because it happened to do with cybernetics and... You know, it reminded him of Lieutenant Commander Data. Mm-hmm. Which actually reminds me of something. Um, Rami? Yes, Captain? Do you have any information as to how the crew of the Enterprise E is doing that we rescued? Axa, I will... P I will access the Federation database. However, due to distance and latency, it will take some time. As of last last reports, roughly one month old, Captain Worf has received a new commission. Lieutenant, or uh, apologies, Commander Jordy LaForge has finally um, is out of psychiatric care and is working at R and D on Jupiter Station. Excellent. Um. Is the name of Captain Worf's new ship on file? Yes, the USS Courageous. He has petitioned to rename it Kapla. However, that <laughs> is still pending. It seems well, like either it seems like either name would be very fitting for him. I was about to say the Courageous is definitely fitting of Worf. <laughs> that, and as you are leaving the theater. Once you have left the theaters, your comm badges reactivate. After all, the no cell, th no cell phones in theater rule still applies. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. 
<laughs> That's perfect. Uh, uh. Lieutenant Derval to the captain. Please report to operations. The admiral is here. Of course, I'll make my way there post haste. Is who wishes to join him on the on the way to operations? Tolram will look at a pot and go. I will see you tonight for dinner. I better go follow him. Please come back in one piece. Stay away from the exploding consoles. I promise nothing, and you know that. <laughs> he wags his finger in a naughty, naughty fashion before <laughs> turning around and heading back to your quarters. I just wink and keep moving. Uh, Keevan, Demos? Keevan is going to make a quick move to one of the new promenade, lo other promenade locations, make sure that they're staying up to the code. Alright, here, going off and health inspecting. Cool. Exactly. Uh, Demos? Uh, Demos is going to go visit Meloon. Meloon. Alright. That sounds like a fun scene. We'll do that right after the Admirals. So, both uh, Crawford and Dolrum arrive on in Ops. Where you are greeted with a very rare with a sight that you didn't think you'd see out here, would be a Jupiter-class carrier. Hmm. Did I... Darval just... It is the USS Liberation, sir. It is not typically the Admiral's... It's not one that is listed as under the Admiral's purview, but she is on board hmm. and wishes that you speak to her at your earliest convenience. Um, of course, uh... When you can, uh, allow the Liberation to dock and have her sent up to my office. Understood, sir. Uh, the Liberation is too big to fit into the uh, internal docking structure, but there is, but it is able to dock in the, one of the external ports located near the bottom of the station, typically used for freight haulers and cargo transports, but it will suffice for a massive Starfleet carrier con that literally contains other Starfleet starships. In the captain's office, in nearly record time, there is a chime at Captain Crawford's door. Enter. Striding in and, and looking as prim and proper as usual is Admiral Zier. Captain. Commander Dalrum, I apologize Admiral? for I apologize for the shortness in my message and what I was what I could convey at this point over that ah, at what I could convey over subspace. Two reasons. One is quite frankly this is a harebrained scheme I'm not entirely sure is going to work. And the second is if someone finds out I was smuggling you a starship, there might be hell to pay. You're Dolan smuggling will... us a starship, yes. Admiral. I've already ordered um, Captain Drake of the Liberation, or sorry, Commodore Drake. Why they insisted Commodores be held in positions of... Uh, anyways, Commodore Drake of the Liberation to unload it. And she passes a uh, pad over to the captain. Hmm. Captain and he'll Drake. take it. Yep. Take it and... It is a Reliant class. Hmm. Dubbed the USS... I believe it was... Aaron here? No, I literally have it here. The USS Arion. And for hmm. people who are interested, I am now making the sheet available so that people can look over it. Ooh. Yeah. New and... ship. New ship. <laughs> yes. While the captain is reviewing that, I'm going to ask the Admiral if she wants anything uh, to drink after the long journey. Oh, yes, please. I will have a some sort of Merlot, roughly 2350 year, and make it as cold as possible. So, Replicator, or do you want me to go cut, get a hold of Mozzie? Nah, Replicator's fine. I will stroll over to the replicator and start making the order. Captain, do you want anything? Um. 
Just about a small glass of whiskey would be fine. Doesn't matter what. I put input everything into the computer and deliver the drinks to the correct people before sitting back down. And Thank I you. just have a tea. Thank you, Commander. Anyways, My pleasure, Admiral. Anyways, Captain, you may notice a couple odd things about the it's the ship's history. Most notably that it's been decommissioned out of a well, its service history stops about a full year ago. And all information on that is classified and doesn't leave this room unless absolutely necessary. I see. It's it's a first contact vessel, Captain. Figured it'd be best put out here. Right now, Starfleet views it as a bit of an embarrassment, I have to say. You see, about five years ago, it was sent off to a remote quarter of Federation space to, after we have made contact with a species known as the, and she pauses, I, it's impossible to pronounce their name without literally adding a second throat with a massive resonator. Uh, so they, we just call them the Clethene. Hmm. Anyways, the 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 crew was sent out, and we had we didn't never heard from the ship again for until it appeared, scrubbed of all life and computer core. Yeah with a message scrawled that said, leave us alone. Oh. Yeah. Needless to say, Starfleet, it's it's been gathering mothballs in one of the dry dock yards because no starship or no admiral wants it under their service. So, why not? Besides, it's not like you got, I can get you another ship that quick, this quickly, but... And she pauses. So... I did what any uh, go-getting admiral would do. She pauses. Hmm. Seek forgiveness instead of permission. That's I don't think great... that's really most admirals. I think that's most Starfleet, with all due respect. I know. And I really <laughs> should practice what I preach. <laughs> <sighs> yes, well... Hey, that's the way I operate. She glares, I know. You have two reprimands because of it, Commander. Anyways, Captain, the ship itself is apparently, is technically sound. However, the few engineering teams that looked after it in dry dock kept complaining that it was haunted. Strange electrical, huh. strange electrical surges, sounds coming down corridors that never registered on any official sensors... They've been through the whole thing, stem to stern, port to starboard, top to bottom, every sort of device imaginable, and literally one that they created just to look, or just because they wanted to. No sign of anything, so they declared it on paper, it's clean. Um, so That's interesting. Quite. I don't know now, about you, Captain, but I want to spend a night on board and see if I can find anything. That's something that you can do when you're off shift. But that's quite a cause for concern. Another perk for being an admiral is I don't have to make it my concern. It's now yours. If also would, very true. I suppose I should have asked you to, you know, accept the starship assignment before telling you it's haunted. But if you'd like, I could always just load it back up on the formidable and take it home. Or the liberation, sorry. <laughs> Wrong ship. Um, quite honestly, we need a replacement for the lunette, so I don't think we have too much of a choice. I didn't think so, Captain. Now, from what information you gave me, you said you were here to visit the Beta 3 catapult. Any more information you can give me as to why you're here, or is it more classified information? Oh, no. That's quite frankly um, the reason I'm out here with the Liberation and its uh, embedded 
uh, Aquarius starships is we're going to tow the damn thing. The whole station. Some sort tow of... it where? That's the part you're not going to like, Captain. Okay. Well, you might like it, I don't know. Near as the boss... Apparently there are technical super... There's apparently a group in Starfleet who believe that machines operate because they just want to. And, the pre and literally flinging a ship into null space, even close to the Carceri Nebula, is apparently a variable that they would rather, they believe, is interfering with the machines working. So we're towing the whole damn station, the whole bloody catapult, onto the other side of the Carceri Nebula so that it is not interfering. The downside is that this places it, well, the upside is that it places it far closer to your station, the downside is that it places it a little closer to the Vitars, which is a group of individuals we were hoping not to further antagonize during this whole internal political debate thing. Have you heard anything from them in the last month? Not very much, if anything. Good. Admiral? Yes? Can I inquire why you're putting it closer to the Vitars instead of further galactically south? Like in the Theta-4 sector where there's only one inhabited planet? Uh, she pulls up a miniature map on her uh, wrist projector just so that she remembers where exactly that is. Uh, yeah. Well, we also wanted to make keep it close to the station. Uh, the reports of the s pirate slavers uh, hijacking. This area is a bit lawless, and we would prefer that the station be somewhere where it's where a proper response would take hours to arrive, if instead of a day or two. That is understandable. Let's, we call it a calculated risk, and if all else fails, we'll just bring this. We'll just, you know, t up. Ah, we'll uproot an entire Starfleet's uh, Starfleet Task Forces Commodore, pull his ship all the way out here again, and force him to play tugboat for another week. She she laughs. Damn, I love my job. <laughs> there are perks. There are. Well, Admiral, do you need any assistance from the station for the this task? I don't think so. We actually have some, contrary to popular belief, there are competent Starfleet officers all over the place, and it sounds like you have your work cut out for you with this new ship. Ghosts and all. She looks at Crawford. If you're going to promote one of them, just make sure it's by the book. Of course. I have some theories on what could be haunting it from logs that I've read through over the years. Well, you are well you are welcome to look as far, as well as you'd like. Ah, you're welcome to delve as deeply into the problem as you deem fit. So noted, Admiral, I will make sure that it passes all inspections. Splendid. Now as much as I'd like to stay in chat, Captain, Commander, I do have a station to pull. Captain Hamasi is going to love this. I haven't actually told her I'm arriving. I'm sure she will. <sighs> if you need anything, Admiral, don't be afraid to reach out. Of course. I have your comm frequencies. Zier to the Liberation. Beam me out and make sure I have a fresh bottle in my, in my suite. And with that, she vanishes. And as we head back to the external shot, we see the uh, bay doors on the carrier open up, and you catch a glimpse of uh, two massive port-to-starboard hangars, uh, completely exposed to the void, inside of which you could easily fit four Defiant class, or sorry, 25th century Sao Paulo class vessels. Uh, 
two of its stalks is made a is completely filled with a Miranda class. Reliant? Reliant class, yes. <laughs> and I apologize for the stream. There's a graphical glitch going on in Roll20 that cuts off the background if it's not positioned just so. Anyways, the USS Arion is released and set a ad- or set adrift. Uh, the tractor beams on the, the tractor beams on the station pick it up and guide it inside. As it's being guided in, Dolrum will look to the captain. Permission to go inspect the ship. <sighs> Permission granted. All right. Mind if I take Kivon and some of the science team? Do what you need to. All right, we'll do. And as I go into the turbo lift, dull room to Kivan. Keith in here. Could you assemble a small team uh, as well as I'm going to go get a hold of the sciences? We have a new ship to inspect. Ooh. That sounds exciting. Um, I will get a small crew together and. Wait. What? Who do? Just a small engineering team? Well, it's been in a. Jupiter class carrier for at least the last couple of weeks. So they've had their own inspections, but never hurts to be thorough. Ah, uh, I understand. Somebody's been jury rigging around with it or playing around with it, and we would just make sure it's up to Cerberus station standards. Gotcha. That and something else that I'll explain when we get there. Ooh, intriguing. I'll meet you there. Okay. See you there soon. So we're going to have an away team mission inside a starship, which I think might be a first here. <laughs> inside so, the star base. Yes, which is <laughs> quite hilarious. Okay, so we are playing. Uh, let's get some tokens going. So we're going to have Mr. Uh, Dalrum, of course, Mr. Keevan. Um, who else would like to come on board? Um, Unless Keevan wants... Nia to act as a chief engineer while he's gone. I'll bring Nia. No, let's use Nia. Nia could Nia could use the experience. Oh, plus, yes. you know, plus, plus. Then again, you know, this is going to get some crazy shit. So I'm ready for. <laughs> okay, so Dolan I like Nia. I mean, we might need the experimental device. You never know. I'm um, gonna need the hack stuff. <laughs> uh, Shizno, who do you want to bring along? Uh. Doesn't matter. matter. All right. Hmm. Tuesday. Du- sure. All right. Tuesday it is. Okay. So there is. So the transporters deposit you right on Arian's bridge. Um, Eagle Eye viewers might recognize the bridge as the same one on the Nighthawk. One of these days I'll get a proper bridge, but that takes time and, and money, which is neither I have right now. So, the lights are off. Uh, bare, bare emergency lighting only. Uh, there's just enough life support going. Main power is down. Uh, most of the L cars are displaying in uh, screensaver mode only. And this is... W- and there is a thin layer of dust over everything. Wow, they really did leave the ship just sitting around for a couple weeks, didn't they, Commander? Apparently the Commander is silent. <laughs> Commander Dolrum is just walking around. Look, oh, everything. sorry. I've been talking and I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> he was deep in thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, the ship was in dry dock for about approximately a year prior to it being ma- uh, making the journey out here. But it's also been, shall we say, a little untouched on purpose. This is going to be a good time for Kevin to kind of look at Nia and Tuesday. Uh, 
gentlemen, if you want to go ahead and start looking at the guts of the systems, make sure warp systems, reactor, everything is looking up to snuff right now. Of course, on my way. And Nia's going to go ahead and leave. <laughs> I'm going to look at Nia as he's going through. Nia, stick with Tuesday. We're sticking with buddy systems to the ship based on <sighs> possible, shall we say, hauntings? Okay, now I just now I just look at Dolorum. Haunted? Are we really believing this? I don't know. I have some preliminary theories on what it could be, but according to what the Admiral was saying, uh, a lot of individuals who have been stepped foot on the ship have reported hearing voices moaning throughout the ship, and every test they've done has come back clear. McCall just rolled a d20 in chat, and I'm yep. scared. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that was. No oh, boy. You know how some people just play with dice? You know? It's... I think... I feel like in this case, it's definitely for a reason, but... Oh, probably. Oh, sure. <laughs> Haunted. Okay. It's not unheard of, but... Keevan taps his badge. Keevan to Captain Crawford. This is the captain. Go ahead. Do you have a couple of science personnel in mind that's kind of... What's the word I want to use? Out of the box? Mm -hmm. Crawford will say, like, out there? Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Um... Well, if we're looking for personal opinions, um, I feel like if you wanted them, uh, Ensign Ilya and Lieutenant Usha might be your people. Ensign Usha. Oh, whoops. That sounds perfect. Thank you, Captain. Not a problem. Oh, Ela is definitely a person to bring on. He has astronautical phenomenon and chronological anomalies. Yeah. And I yeah, mean, so... Neo, Neo's got his own theories about what's going on, too. So, so yeah. Yeah, we would call them on the ship and basically have them... I would say have each of them with... One of them with Neo, one of them with Tuesday. Okay. At least for, At least that's my thought, Commander. I would agree that means we can spread out and still check the systems pretty thorough, but also Usha and Ela keep an eye out for random occurrences. The ship has been reported to be haunted. I personally don't necessarily believe that it's haunted, but thinking when the Admiral ta uh, was talking about it, the only thing I could think of was the reports of people being out of phase that came from the Enterprise when uh, Rolaren and LaForge were out of phase with the rest of reality. Yeah, that could definitely be something. We, we had something like that recently, I think, too. Well, let's. I would. I would suggest let's go ahead and start checking out all the systems, and we can start right here at the top. And um, the group of Chief Nia Tuesday and Ensign Lakila, um, Lakila could go ahead and start in the warp. Try to get main power back online. And after that, we can turn on the environmental systems and blow all this dust away. <laughs> or kick it Careful. up and make everyone, everyone sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Coronavirus! Mm. <laughs> and now we've been demonetized. Thanks for that. Anyways, Aww. that's okay. I don't make money anyways. <laughs> Yet. All right. So, uh, down through the trip. So, app. Ah, 
Uh, let's look at Nia and Tuesday and Lakila on the way down. Is Usha going with them, or is uh, Usha staying with us? Usha staying here. She has. Okay. She inquires whether or not she should prepare a séance. Maybe keep that in as a um, alternative action. She nods. Right, standard science it is. Down in engineering. Okay. Tuesday. Lakila and Nia wander into engineering after applying the manual door open uh, tools or whatever the 25th century equivalent of a crowbar is. Uh, the engineering room is similar to that of the rest of the ship you've gone through. Eerily quiet, emergency lighting only, and everything is covered in a thin layer of dust. I think Tuesday is the ranking officer here. Oh no! <laughs> oh yes, I think. Well, what is Tuesdays? I thought he was an ensign. He's a lieutenant. Yeah, he's a lieutenant. Oh no, we're dead. Corn oh. <laughs> is in charge. <laughs> You're fine. He's a lieutenant. Sorry. Go. Uh, yeah. Yep. Tuesdays is gonna go, and um, I'm assuming we brought our own little backup power supplies oh, with us. Naturally. Yeah, he's just going to hook one up into one of the consoles, the uh, engineering um, diagnostic console, and right. start getting a readout on what was last recorded on the ship. Okay. Uh, roll me an ins uh, insight plus engineering, please. And uh, the ship is currently dead, so it won't be able to assist you. So either Nia or Lakila could assist. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty uh, of two. Nia will uh, assist, sure. All right. I'm going to give him an activation. Okay. I'm going to increase his engineering to uh, five. Cool. Jerk! He has no hope. Nope. Uh, structural knowledge is a focus? Sure. Uh, uh, you get roughly the last... Well, before the ship was fully powered up, uh, well, the last time the ship was fully powered up was about a year, a year and two, a few days ago. Uh, so the computer core has been pretty much wiped. Uh, you're you're able to pull up a few records before it was fully into Mothball. It just contains the uh, Mothball checklist of the engineering team that did it bef at the uh, at the Vulcan yards. You're not able to gather much of what happened to the ship beforehand, only that all pieces are accounted for in that frustratingly verbose Vulcan language. Okay. I'm just going to skim through it. Nothing stands out. Uh, then I'm going to... Uh, bring on the... So this terminal is powered up. Uh, does it have any connections with the rest of the ship? Or do I need to like do a full systems boot? which would include bringing the fusion reactors back online. Oh, a full boot would uh, take... The full boot would take some time, but you, thankfully the ship doesn't need warp speed. Uh, most, pow ah, most power would just need this, uh, the fusion generator to be powered up. Starting the warp core itself might take a good six hours, but fusion core should be up and running within ten minutes. Okay, yeah. So then if the computer is accepting any commands, mm -hmm. I'll instruct it to... Uh... Start up the boot sequence for the fusion reactors. Okay. Uh, roll me a control plus engineering, please. Difficulty of zero. Oddly enough, don't have a focus for this. <laughs> and but yet you still it. do amazingly well. That's three momentum for you guys. Nice. On the bridge, as uh, Keevan and Daldrum, you guys are attempting to squeeze the data equivalent of blood from a stone. Uh, you feel the w warm and welcome vibrations of a fusion core powering to life. Uh, the air handlers turn on. The air that you didn't realize was, was stale begins to circulate afresh. 
And within 10 minutes, your the bridge itself is operational. Uh, down here in engineering systems, all systems appear green. Mm, so far, so good. Ah, love that clean, clean ship smell. Yes, it is quite nice to start to have clean, fresh air to breathe. Oh, you, <laughs> Commander, you think this was bad? You should shoot a smell that after five years stale on an old Reliant class. And I mean the old Reliant class. Those Miranda? are... No, I mean Reliant class. Have to tell me about it later. For now, let's start up getting other systems operational. Let's see what we can get operational from here. Like, get weapons. We're not shooting anything, but let's get see if we can get systems online. I would definitely think internal scanners and secure and sensor. Okay. Well, we can get that up and running first. Okay. So up on the bridge. Nope, that's the station bridge. We're looking for the Arians bridge. Uh, whichever one of you is attempting to restore primary systems, please roll me a uh, control plus engineering, please. And this is going to be a difficulty of one. And the ship is still not in a position to assist. Hmm. Kevin, it's definitely going to be you, because my control engineering is a 13. Honestly, it's the same as mine. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, so if Neo Kevin... was on the bridge, he would help. Because <laughs> his control engineering is a 16. So, Hey, we're going to work on the actual chief engineer getting a little better in skill, but anyhow... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin, you lead and I can assist. <laughs> if McCall will allow it. Uh, sure, why not? Okay, that's two successes from there Kevin. So we get a momentum. Yes, you do. As you activate the ship sensors and the inter and the internal uh, life support systems. The whole ship seems to shudder. Uh, there is a low moaning sound as the life support system uh, turns over and begins to uh, properly uh, work instead of just operating on canned air. And well, I don't know that the ship wants to be activated after that sound. If uh, Mr. Keevan, could you please roll me a... Uh, insight plus command test. And if you have uh, detail oriented or pattern recognition or stuff like that as your focus or as a focus, that would be a good one. Ooh, unfortunately, no. Okay. All right. Now, yeah. whatever was going to happen, you missed it. Cool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> The sensors are reading that you are inside a ramp inside the dry dock of a Rampart class space station designated as Deep Space 15. Uh, the USS Arion is online and prepared to accept command codes. Has the full computer booted up? Or are we still on reserve computer power? Uh, the full computer is powering up as we speak. Keevan is literally watching the uh, Microsoft Windows logo slowly march across the screen. <laughs> hey, that stuff is mesmerizing. I'm just saying. <laughs> this, stream's brought, this stream brought to you by Microsoft. Please sponsor me, please. <laughs> uh, anyways. And down in engineering, if I could ask Mr. Nia and Mr. Tuesday to please roll me an insight plus engineering test, difficulty two each. Similar insight rules apply. Uh, any focuses apply? Uh, Detail-oriented, uh, computers, something like that. You said 
pattern recognition, okay. you said? Yep, pattern recognition, that sort of stuff. Alright, so not, not structural knowledge. Then. I Sadly not. do have focus. Yes. Do you? Boop. Tuesday makes it, and Nia does not. Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tuesday, there's the bog standard startup scripts that are running. Every system is running its uh, power on systems test. Each one of them is marking green. Uh, green checkbox, green checkbox, green checkbox, green checkbox, help us. Green checkbox, green checkbox, green checkbox, green checkbox, don't fall asleep. Green checkbox, green checkbox. <laughs> so and this is what he's seen or is he hearing it? That's what he, that's what you're seeing. And as soon as you uh, blink to refocus the messages are gone now to be fair we have established that tuesday blinks one eyelid at a time yes i apologize <laughs> you you take your attention off for a split second in some way shape or form and then they revert you just tap the screen for a second to see if anything happens nope all right He's going to pull his tricord and start scanning it. <laughs> All right. Uh, insight plus science. And I'm not going to tell you the difficulty, but if you have spectral analysis, particle physics. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's worth a shot. If you like a momentum. Uh, sure. Do, do, he, yeah. Ooh, nice fancy one. Nope, uh, the tricorder is reading that all life's, all signs are normal. And he just shakes the tricorder a bit. <laughs> he just looks at it for a second, then just shrugs and goes back to watching the monitor. Green checkbox, green checkbox, green checkbox, ad infinitum. He's just going to take a look around and see if anyone else knows anything and since no one's saying anything he's just going to go back to it uh, on the bridge <clears throat> uh, yeah uh, on the bridge you guys are seeing pretty much the exact same thing just from the bridge's point of view one by one all terminals come online the all systems are within 20 minutes all systems are operational with the exception of Warp drive, impulse engines, uh, the holodeck systems, anything requiring a dedicated amount of power and computational use, such as... And, oh, this might surprise you, Commander Dolrum. This sick bay is equipped with an EMH. Oh, boy. Well, if we have an EMH, it'd be interesting to see what's in his memory banks, because it's a separate, independent system from everything else on the ship. Mm-hmm. Well, we might be able to access it if we put in a command code. Uh, Commander, if it's okay with you, I'd like to put the ship temporarily in my commission. I don't see a problem with that. As we're working on it, you are going to be here more than most. Okay. And then he just taps on the terminal and says... Uh, computer, um, commission ship to Lieutenant Commander Keevan, access code Keevan Omega 642 Delta. Authorization codes accepted. Welcome back, Commander. Well, now let's see what we can find out. Um... Uh, can we actually see if the EMH is usable anywhere in the ship or just in sickbay? A uh, quick scan of the computer records indicate that this ship, this ship's EMH is only accessible within the sickbay. So it was built before shipwide holodeck. No, displays. it was built before, or it was built after the shipboard holodecks. Uh, there is, however, a quick scan of the holo systems indicate that most of them were 
Most of the shipboard, ah, most of the shipboard hollow projectors were decommissioned by the previous CMO and chief engineer. Hmm. Um, ah, more people yeah. who don't dislike holograms. What's wrong with a good hologram? We just saw two really good ones just spin up on two an hour ago. Oh, I agree. But there's always those people who hate holograms. Out well, of character, I'm trying to remember whether you were here when uh, we had Chief Ember or not. I don't know. He showed Thank up just you. after. Yeah, I was. I showed up right after Ember. So I just looked at you. You never knew Chief Ember. Uh, not except for that one moment where they some of the old crew decided to show back up on the station, but that's about it. Yeah. She's one that literally went to war with the CMO or the uh, EMH aboard uh, Cerberus. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Um, maybe we should all go down to engine- um, sick bay and, like you said, see if the EMH has any I rather like that idea. Let's get on it. Right. Usha, are you going to stay here and keep up, up systems, or are you coming with us? If it's all the same to you, Commander, I'd like to stay here. Fine with me. If anything happens, make sure to contact us. Of course. And as we turn and walk away, I just look to Kivan. I know she can defend herself, so I'm not too worried about her. As long as she brought enough salt. Uh, I just realized I did not have the EMH token. Um, so give me a split second while I make it, and then we will have an EMH for you. Da, 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 da. We're listening to the music in the turbo lift. It's the turbo this lift. One... Exactly. It moves at the speed of plot. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's a bit slow to get off the ground. <laughs> or get off the bridge. Its well, activators the, haven't moved in a very long time. And the ship is still getting power restored to it, so... Yes. Okay. Turbolift is saying, please wait. Ele- energy allocation in progress. Please wait. Loading. <laughs> exactly. Like Windows 95. Pretty Thank you, Microsoft. So. It's like the uh, lo- loading scenes in Mass Effect 1, where it was literally the elevator. Okay, done that, done that. You make your way down to sick bay. As soon as I get to the right token, there we go. Copy tokens. Welcome to sick bay. It is a pretty bog standard sick bay. Uh, two care beds, one diagnostic surgery bed, office for the CMO, and a small medical lab. Mm, I miss miss a sick bay like this. Well, we have multiple gigantic sick bays on station, but that's what happens when you have several thousand people in one location. Computer, activate EMH. EMH program loading. Please stand by. Definitely going to have to look at the the computer speed on this one. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. As a blue Andorian with a white goatee and white um, sideburns uh, steps forward from the medical bay. You are new. What happened to my old crew? Well, that's kind of what we're looking for. And I'll fill the EMH in with all the information that we know thus far. I see. So this isn't a medical emergency. This is you simply asking me what in, is in my medical base. My medical Your base. Memory? Which you Your could easily day? have queried. Very well. Stand by while I access my memories. And he pauses and goes inside himself for a brief second of time. This is extremely curious. I have records that I have been active or activated at several points in the last several years. 
However, I do not have any records of personnel, history, or even what I did. Much of my records appear to have been scrubbed. I'm sorry, Commanders. I am unable to help you. However, if you have any contusions, broken bones, lacerations, internal hemorrhaging, I am also, also programmed to assist in psychiatric care. If you are feeling schizophrenic, bipolar, depression, I am certainly able to assist. We'll keep that in mind, EMH. By your own diagnostic, do you notice any tampering with your memory banks or just the fact that no information is there? I am a, I am able to determine that my memory was reset by by the programs or by the engineers at the uh, at the Vulcan shipyards. It appears to have not been tampered with, but appears to have been done legitimately. Well, thank you very much for the information. Very intriguing that they'd want to wipe a memory bank. Not that I'm a suspicious person, but that's suspicious. I would agree. Well, it looks like we're going to have to go for a deep dive into the systems and see what um, we can find out. Meanwhile, we are going to cut back to the station. So it's been a couple hours po while the, the, your away team is searching for its or searching for ghosts in the system so to speak uh, Mr. Crawford and Mr. Demos are summoned to the bridge as their peer as um, Mr. Ah, as Lieutenant Darval is detecting uh, two, two ships uh, apparently one in pursuit of the other are your signatures recognized by our systems, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Uh, the smaller craft appears to be the, or appears to have signatures of of the Yalexi, while as the larger ship in pursuit appears to be that of the Ulke Emirates. I am pulling up visual now, and what you are seeing is. Uh, where are they? There's the tokens. So there is a small fighter class or fighter-sized shuttle ship that uh, d uh, of a class that Demos definitely recognizes as the escorts, uh, scale two escorts to the large freighters, and it is in pers and it is being pursued by a fairly large uh, scale four. Or, sorry, scale six uh, cruiser. Uh, long, narrow, sleek. Not a single right-hand angle on it at all. <clears throat> hmm. um, it, the, the smaller ship is casting f uh, the occasional rear shot backwards, but the... But yeah, the shots are easily being absorbed by the larger ship's shields. And Captain, I've analyzed their trajectory. The smaller ship is appearing to aim for one of the transwarp gates. Hmm. The larger ship is, or the Ulkir ship is hailing us, sir. On screen? Uh, you recognize the the ambassador who has visited your station in the past, uh, Prince Aksha of the UK. Federation Starbase. Uh, I am. If you can, if you are able to help us or assist us in apprehending this fugitive, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. If I may. Ask Prince Aksha, what did this fugitive do? What this fugitive is doing, Captain, is she's attempting to destroy. A, uh, she's attempting to destroy a tr an agreement that would have seen 
of much wealth or much stability and peace between our two peoples. But instead, she decided to fall in love. Was this some kind of, if I may ask, Prince of Marriage arrangement of sorts? It's a bit more complicated than that, but yes. I'll mute the communication on my end, but keep the visual up. And just kind of look over to Demos. Lieutenant, I'll take any opinions you have on this, but I'm not 100% sure that we should interfere, but maybe we should mediate between these two. He just kind of looks at what's going on. I was like, you're the one in charge. We're a station here. We've been asked to seal off one of the gates, I guess. Do we have the full picture? No. It's your call. Lieutenant Darval, is there any chance that you can try to hail the Yalexi escort ship? I've been attempting to do so for the last three minutes, Captain. They are not receiving hails. I am detecting two life signs, one Yalexi, one Ulke. I see. Um, Prince Aksha, if I may, I'm not necessarily sure if I want to help unless I have the full picture of this situation could you possibly see if the two individuals on the ship you're pursuing would want to join us on board the station along with yourself and we can talk about this in a neutral manner I shall attempt to... one last try captain stand by as Darval pulls up the holographic representations of the ships within the nebula in correspondence to the station, the uh, sm smaller, lighter craft is nearing the edge of your transporter range and the tractor beam range. Uh, Prince Aksha is attempting to hail it one more time. Captain, the smaller vessel is hailing us. Uh, patch them through, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Um, okay, I could have sworn I had a token for her. Where the heck did I put the token for her? <sighs> okay, Michael did, McCall did not upload the token. Give me a split second here. This is what happens when I don't do my pre-gaming... Um, also called, he was told to work today. Yeah, I know. How unfair. <laughs> Done that. Uh, tokens. Okay. Anyways. A dark, a black-skinned female. Um, her eyes... Her... The sclera, the white parts, of a uh, white parts of a human's eyes, are pitch black, and her irises are white, giving her a bit of a um, possessed look. Uh, jumps on screen. She's trying to maintain calm, but at the same time flying evasive maneuvers against a heavily armed uh, foe is not making it easy for her. Captain, if, you're, if your offer of amnesty and diplomatic assistance is, is genuine, then I, Princess Ela of the Ukle Emirates, wish to parlay on board your station as under neutral ground. It's something that can certainly be arranged. There we go. There's her token art. I'll resize and make her a proper character in time, but that's what she looks like. Good. Uh, she speaks to someone off screen. Pulls around. Far side docking bay. Keep us away from that 
keep him away from my brother's ship. Captain, please bring your bay door. Please open your bay doors, and whatever you do, don't let that ship dock next to ours. I would also request a security escort meet us for my protection. I'll try to arrange both, but I can't promise anything. Captain, you are going to be hosting a very tense negotiation between a, two brothers, or not two brothers, a brother and a sister of the same royal family on board your station. You had we. better... There's going to be... Pro you had better start making promises for my safety. <laughs> Most certainly. Good. We are coming in. Lieutenant Deimos, it seems like you might have to arrange a small security team. He just nods like, yep. Cool. And head on out and get it all set up. All right. Ms. Deimos, or as uh, she signs off, uh, Prince Aksha. Uh, his face once again fills the holographic projection screen. Ah, Captain, I am so pleased that we could come to a agreement for neutral territory. If she had hit the, any one of those gates, who knows where she, she would be. I look forward to seeing a end to this craziness shortly. I shall bring a shuttle aboard, sure. I shall bring a shuttle. Please open one of your bay doors. Open one of your bay doors for me. And with that, he cuts the communication. Oh, this is going to be an interesting day. Haunted ship. Had to settle a sibling feud. Wonderful. All right. Now, Demos, are you going to be meeting the uh, princess? In person? Uh, yeah. Okie dokie. Okay. Let's do that then. Uh, as soon as I get her token properly created so that she can be a proper character. Come on, roll 20. Be nice to me. Is there's the token? And who's going to be joining you for the security detail? Uh, I'll have uh, Rainer and just a few unnamed. You got it. Changes. Okay. Princess Ia. Uh, strides out of the shuttle. Following her is... A, uh, she stands approximately 5 foot 5, whereas he stands approximately f uh, 6 feet. Uh, the Yalexi, uh, tall, sinewy, snake-like individual, bipedal, comes at a respectful distance. As she approaches, she looks you up and down. You must be this, uh, you must be Demos. My brother, the prince, spoke, spoke of you quite highly. Oh, that's good to know. He often wondered how much you would be worth if he could purchase your services. Do you happen to have a cost? Hmm, maybe. But right now I'm doing my job of keeping you safe. Splendid. And uh, this is my... She looks back. We've never settled on a name for our relationship, as not one really exists, but his name is Ariscott. Uh, he, nice to meet you. A pleasure. He bows deeply. His doesn't look like he has any real, uh, it, what's the phrase I'm looking for, restrictions in his ribs that pre prevent him from how far down he can bend. He almost does a full 
spend in double. Oh my. Yes, indeed. Oh my, indeed. He was just give a nod. He was like, all right, well, I got some quarters for you. We're going to set up a nice little guard and key location so we can keep an eye on you. Thank and you. on case if anyone tries to get near you without authorization. For the first time uh, since she's come on board, you've noticed her relax just a little bit. As well, she follow me. Yes. Yes, I shall. And the two of them uh, fall in step behind you. Uh, you notice fairly quickly, um, Erasked uh, falls in lockstep with uh, Princess Ia. Meanwhile, okay. at a different security bay, the captain... Out of curiosity, are the people on the haunted ship being told of this? Ah, uh, yeah, he at least give notification. Okay. Is that going to change anything that Dolrum does? Not unless we are called back. Okay. Works for me. As long as that's okay with the captain. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Okay, so Captain Crawford, you are at... You are at a... Oh, for Pete's sake. Roll 20, please cooperate. Oh, did I not shift screen? I did. I did. Why is the stream not showing the right... There it is. I don't get it. Okay, I'm sorry. I think the screen... I think the stream locked its visual for a second, but that seems to be working again. Apologies for that. This tonight is just not my night, it seems. Anyways. Now. Where were we? Oh, right. The captain is at another airlock where he is meeting Prince Aksha. Normally, Prince Aksha does not travel without a retinue of bodyguards and harem. However, this time he comes alone. Captain, his voice booms, and his he seems to have put on extra weight since you've seen him in the last uh, three or four months. Uh, whatever he is currently doing, it seems to be agreeing with him. Huh. Thank you very much for welcoming back to your pleasant home. It's a pleasure to welcome you back. Now, and he pulls a long ri uh, it is actually a physical uh, scroll rolled up in one of those whatever they call the scroll rollers now here is the full transcription of the laws that my sister had agreed to and he passes it to you it's unreadable because it is written physically in their language you'll have to see it translated but I can certainly get to work on making that happen. Good. Now, I will take your finest quarters, of course. And I hope that I will not be too much of an inconvenience while I'm here. I must admit, I did enjoy the replicator service the last time. I was unaware of all the delicacies that it could produce. Made me quite jealous. I hope to... Would I be able to buy that technology from you? Or perhaps the technical diagrams for it? I would... It would be a very wealthy partnership. Um... Sharing Starfleet technology with other species is a little bit of a... There's a lot of red tape surrounding it, but I'm sure it can start to be discussed. Splendid, Captain. Absolutely splendid. And he will trundle off to his... He, uh, he f heads off to his to the quarters. A security guard begins to flank him to offer directions, and he just waves him off. To, nope, nope, I know the way.
And with the stages set, we shall take our we shall take a quick break. Uh, let's be back at half past the hour. So about 13 minutes or so. Alrighty. All right. Okay. See you soon. And we are back, where we will be back on the bridge of the USS Arian. Dolrum and Rikivan is currently sitting in the captain's chair. Dolrum is doing a full systems check. And Usha is sort of sitting at one of the chairs, zoning out a bit from time to time. Sort of just poking buttons absent mindedly while her mind works. And she. Commanders, she says, breaking the silence that is still heavy despite the fact that all environmental systems are operational. Durham will swivel around in his chair. Yes, Usha. Well, whatever she's was whatever was going on about this ship being haunted, I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I do I am picking up something occasionally. It's just one of those feelings. I, I can't really explain it. You know, we just you know my species, we're just time and space are a little wibbly wobbly. why you're perfect for being on here what are you sensing i'm sense it do you know when you're in a communication trying to communicate in a class 5 ion storm yeah sure the protocols will link but you don't pick up anything more than about 10 percent of what the other person's saying pretty good visual she sort of puts her hands to her chin, sort of shakes her head. Something like that. There's, I don't know, I can see why this thing was kept mothballed. It made anyone with any sort of psychic awareness a little bit uneasy. And given that this thing was stored at Vulcan, I can see why the Vulcans would deem it logical to not s s set foot on it. No, the Vulcans being slightly telepathic, it would make sense. Mm. She stands up. Anyways, C Commander, near as I can tell, the ship is perfectly fine to use. It just might rattle and roll a little bit from time to time. If you'd like, I could come back with a um, with some melted candle wax. Find a blood of a goat, maybe. She's sort of, that's a joke, Captain, or Commander. Well, I figured. I was just going to suggest if he wanted to find a goat, go to the new pet store. <laughs> yes, I'd seen that it had opened up. It's a shame they don't sell tribbles. Well, I might know where you can get a hold of one. Hmm. Uh, Kevin kind of looks at Dolorum. Don't even get that idea. I do not need triples on this station. Okay. I'll let you think that. Yeah. <sighs> even just sighs and it's like, if they get into the syst EPS systems again, I'm going to have it out. Usha chuckles. Speaking of which, Usha, did you do kind of a face scan? Similar to how Enterprise was dealing with Roe and Jordy. The uh, Nadion, Paul, Nadion sweep? Or mm -hmm. no, sorry. Anion sweep. Yeah. Anion. Anion. Ah, yes, the Anion sweep. Yes, 
I I had the station run an Anion and Chronoton sweep of the of the ship. Both came up showing no anomalies, which I'm kind of surprised at, I have to say. But and once again, there's that small shake of her head. It's probably nothing. I mean, if the ship really was haunted, it would have done something to someone by now over the last couple years. Right? Well, it was dry docked for over a year and then spent several weeks coming out here. It hasn't had really any service since it turned up. Well, Commander, I volunteer to be on the, on the crew that takes her out for a test spin. I'll make sure your name's on the list. Excellent. I'm curious to check out this astrometrics lab. With your permission, sir. And she directly looks at Lieutenant Commander Keevan. I would prefer you to go with somebody else. Yeah, I haven't looked at... I need to get some new ideas and see about our astrometrics. Um... Commander, would you like to go down there with us, or do you want to stay here on the bridge? I can stay on the bridge. Usha, if you'd like to go to Astrometrics, lead the way. Yes, sir. And they do that. Yeah, just, just, just saying, I'm trying not to bust and break up the team, but... Yeah. Dolrum's going to move down to the main helm, only because most of the bridge commands can be controlled from the helm. Okay. All command functions are routed upon you uh, sitting down. You have a lovely pull-down section of tactical display, navigation. Oh, for it. This is interesting. The warp core has powered has power cycled up approximately three hours quicker than you think it should be. Seeing that, I'm going to uh, calm down to engineering. Dolrum to engineering team. This is Nia. Go ahead. What's the status of the warp drive uh, powering up? From the readouts up here, it's coming on rather quickly and looking at it from our position does it look like it's powering up rather quickly uh, it is not it is right whereabouts it expected to be still approximately three hours or so to go the um, dilithium intermix aligner is slowly sliding into place performing all tests on the antimatter containment systems which, of course, are tests that you really don't want to rush. Gotcha. Uh, Commander, everything seems fine down here. Hmm. And Commander Dolrum, as you look back to your uh, readout, oh yeah, it's now matching what engineering is seeing perfectly. Kind of taking a double take, I'll just go. Intriguing. I'm wondering if it was just a faulty reading by the computer. Or it could be our quote-unquote ghost friends visiting us. Also completely possible. And at this point, we are now in Astrometrics. Where those people don't exist, and these people do. Yay! <clears throat> Astrometrics is a large... Um, hemispherical, or semicircular room, I should say. Large maps portraying all the data on the Carceri Nebula and the areas that it's able to detect, which is not a heck of a lot at the moment. It has yet to tie into the station systems and download any sort of relevant graphs. Usha sits down at one of the chairs and slowly spins. Hmm. Why must they make these labs so damn big? I think it's the grandeur of space and the openness yet 
emptiness of it all that they make these rooms so darn big. Hmm. Uh, and she pauses. She starts pushing up some of the consoles, sort of haphazardly causing all sorts of star systems to pop up on screen. Hmm. Hey, Denob, there's your home planet there, Mr. Keevan. Denobuli. Yeah. I haven't seen it look so good. Well, that's one thing about astrometrics. Really, they don't skimp on the uh, high definition displays. No, they don't. They definitely want you to be able to see what you got to see. Although, look into Beta Z right now. Yes, sir. Archival image, sir. This thing hasn't updated its data banks in about a year and a bit. But, here she be. On the screen. Betazoid. Mm, that, that, Betazoid. that I remember. <laughs> that That's home. That's really home right there. Fantastic. Well, let's see if we can get this tied into the station systems to get it updated. Yes, sir. And if you could please roll me a control plus engineering, please. Uh, sys computer systems would be a good one. Astrometrics, if you have it. Uh, stellar cartography? I'll let that work, sure. I'll take it. All right, that's the two successes you need. Fantastic. Still getting scared by your random rolls on the screen, though. Mm. Who says the GM can't play psychological warfare from time to time, eh? Uh, every player ever. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace your rolls. Embrace the rolls. Mm. Keevan, as you're busy rolling the... De or, not rolling, as you're setting up the computer's inter or interconnections with the station's computer. Uh, several images begin to download and flash in rapid succession as they are loaded up into the uh, computer's local banks. Uh, very, your eyes settle. Uh, one seems to take a particularly long period of time on the screen. It is the giant platinum head that is Janus 3. And its mouth is open, and it stares at you for a little too long before going away, and then um, all the other stellar objects in this area of space begin to download in rapid succession. Usha just turns to you. You saw that too, right? That was exactly what I was just going to ask you, to bring up a picture of Janus 3. Huh. Well, if you excuse me, uh, Lieutenant Commander, I do believe that I'm going to go find me a some candles and a pint of goat's blood, just in case. You might want to hurry back here, yeah. I'm going to see if there's something I can figure out with this core system to see if there's something to that. And with that, Usha will... Usha to Cerberus Station, one to beam out. And she beams out. Down in engineering. Uh, we have Mr. Lakila keeping an eye on sensor or keeping an eye on the plasma flow regulators as they boot up in succession. Mr. No, L Lieutenant Tuesday, I'm reading all green on the port nacelle, starboard nacelle. I am showing uh, plasma interlock number three is jammed. Tuesday, just wander on over and take a look at the screen. I will go fix. Right. And uh, yeah, he'll head on over to go take a look at the interlock. Okay. 
Um, plasma interlock would be somewhere above the current room, deep in the bowels of the ship. Jeffrey's tube it is. Yeehaw. And I don't have a set piece for Jeffrey's tube, so theater of the mind it is. Crawling through the Jeffrey's tubes is something that you don't really miss uh, having to do on the station. Uh, station conduits are built a little because they don't have to worry about such things such as warp field dynamics and um, you know form versus function uh, the cons the tunnels in Cerberus are almost br almost breathable it's whether it's nostalgic or not is up to you of course mr. Tuesday but it's a cramped environment to work in you make your way to the uh, plasma injector assemblies, and indeed, uh, Lakila is correct. Number three is jammed open, will not seal properly. It appears that there is a se uh, it appears that a bunch of corrosion has taken over, probably a poor alloy job, or galvanization. That's the word I'm looking for. A poor galvanization job has broken down. Okay. Uh, is it something I know I could fix, or would I have to, like, pull out that section? Um, I would not recommend going to warp speeds any higher than 5 with it in place, but it's certainly usable for the moment. All right, so I'll replace one at some point, then. Yeah. Okay. Um, is the ship at risk of being damaged if left as it is? Uh, so Just long... for now? Uh, so long as you can fix the hinging mechanism and get it up and, you know, open and closing again, that's it should be fine. Okay, yeah, I'll um, attempt to work on that. All right, control plus engineering, please. Difficulty of one. All right. Uh, fabrication, structural knowledge. Ooh, yes, either of those would work well. Uh... We've changed scenes a couple of times, so I'm guessing yeah, we're down we just to one momentum. Uh, yes, we should be one momentum. Thank you for re reminding me. Yeah, no worries. I'm it's... taking that one momentum. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, this, yeah, difficulty of... What did I say? Difficulty one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And there's five successes. So that's four momentum right back. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Tuesday right, just pulls out tools, fine tools, and he just starts working on it for such a big thing and big hands. He's very delicate. Finds a couple tools where a couple of his thorns are. Yeah. Uh, he's able to... Oh, sorry. Yes. I was just saying he's just able to fix it very, you know, craftily. It's almost like an art for him. Uh, Nia, there's an alert going through your console. Is that the ship oh. is... Re uh, the ship registers that number that the uh, plasma injector number three is operational again, and the plasma flow is initiating. Uh, Chief Petty Officer Nia to Lieutenant Tuesday. Tuesday here. Um, you might want to leave. It's apparent, according to this console, they're starting the plasma injection. Gonna pull the tricor and get a read. Uh, nope, no plasma here. All safeguards are in place. The ship detects a life sign in the plasma injector assemblies and is not, and thus is not going to flood you with, you know, extremely molten and at risk plasma. All right, he'll um, take another scan just to make sure. All right. Reset everything and do one more scan. Uh, insight engineering, please. Difficulty of one. Actually, difficulty of two. Uh, I'm going to take a momentum. Uh, structural knowledge, because I know yep. how these things are built. Perfect. Oof. Hmm. Everything seems perfectly fine. The safeguards are in place. Um, that's odd. Number three has locked itself open again. Okay. Uh, can I see number three visually? Is it yep. opened? Uh, yes. Number three is open again. Uh, no indication of when it actually opened up again. 
I, I'm going to work on it a bit and try and get it closed again. Uh, easy enough. As soon as you get near it and lay your hands on it, applying the minutest amount of pressure causes it to seal and lock. And once again, the system hums to life and is await pleasantly informs all involved that the starboard plasma manifold is uh, is a, is ready to initialize. Please clear the system. Please clear the system. All organics or all Starfleet officers, please clear the system. Yeah, I'm just gonna look around for a second and slowly make my way back out. And as I get back out of the Jeffrey's chip, I'm just gonna say to Nia, recalibrate the sensors. Will do. You just trudge on back down to the engineering. All right. And now we are going back to what I'm sure is going to be a very stimulating conversation in the conference lounge. Um, between the captain and several other Uh, does De uh, Demos will be here to provide security and input if he wishes. On either side of the captain is Princess Ia and Prince Aksha. One is oddly oh, larger than the other. Let's fix that. There we go. Um, at this point, Captain Crawford, you've gotten the sc scroll of laws translated into common or Federation common. Um, the nature of the laws are state or state that uh, Princess Ia is being transferred to the Harnell cartel um, to uh, ensure a to ensure that a, a proper working ag or a proper trade agreement is in place. Uh, goods and services include a significant amount of stuff. Uh, any there's farming equipment. Uh, sh shuttlecraft, uh, medicine, uh, weapon technology, uh, any sort of any sort of services that could flow between two parties, it appears to be. Uh, the, many of them are seem to be quite vague, including uh, weapon technology, uh, medicine, pharmaceuticals, chemicals. Uh, agricultural needs, etc. And such an agreement would be in place as long as Princess's or Princess Ia's tithe was safe or was uh, kept. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kept sound. Uh, Prince Aksha attempts to explain. Captain, we don't. It's apparently our traditions are as. A phrase I heard one of your people say, bass backwards to others. What is that our people are, uh, our people inherit role, our, our people transition between roles, and those roles in society are fixed. Um, where you may work hard and achieve and acquire new material wealth that is as a result of you as a result of your efforts for one at least in our hierarchy those we are traded as cattle I myself was have been traded into four different roles in the past in the past 30 years each to a different family a different uh, political order, and each time I've had to adapt to my new role or be cast out quickly. It is expected for us to... Yeah. And he pauses. Imagine that he's... I'm trying to explain a system that you don't understand, am I, Captain? I sort of understand at least what you're getting at. It's 
yeah. similar to something that's, I mean, to be honest, rather primitive on Earth. That's called a uh, caste system. Something similar, I suppose. It's a bit more precise, I think. Picture yourself handing over. Uh, let's say that you're interested in a new piece of technology, and you have pieces or you have coins to offer them for that technology. We are the coins, Captain. We are what you, myself and Miss my sister by clan, not blood related. It's we existed in a sphere, and the sphere's owner decided that he want he wanted what the uh, Yalexi could offer, and so he made a trade. He traded Ia and several others for technology. I see. And at this point, yeah, Princess Ia, after ensuring that Demos is still sitting right beside her in full protective mode, bangs her hands on the table. And this is what my brother, not by blood, but this is what Prince Aksha has yet to fully understand. Is Once I was out of our, soci our society's rules, I began to see how stupid and backwards they were. The Alexi have a negative. They're not viewed well by many around them based on how they act, but they are free to do what they want and choose to do what they want, regardless of repercussion. That is all I want. Hmm. And... You came here with the Yalexi individual, didn't you? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. He was... Uh, he was the first one... Or he was the first Yalexi I was meet, I was to meet. He was... one. He was one of the bodyguards to my... Owner? Husband? Whatever he was. Hmm. But... He had a ship... And he had a way with words. Also, he could completely unhinge his jaw and swallow a small rodent hole, but that's beside the point. Prince Aksha, couldn't we... Like, we, I'm not really involved with this matter, but... Isn't there some way that we could... Arrange for. Remind me, remind me, McCall, what the name of Prince Aksha's species was? The Ulke. The Ulke, okay. Doesn't the Ulke have. Oh, I'm supposing that. Gotcha. Doesn't the Ulke have technology that the. Yalexi might want rather than that would maybe make up for your sister not being there in the deal. You're talk you are talking about an exchange of technology of property instead of personhood. I must admit I... that this is a alien concept for me, Captain. This is the first role that I ha where I am able to even speak with outside cultures, let alone interact with so many in <laughs> such a short period of time, thanks to your peace summit. It's overwhelming. I can understand why. To be quite honest, meeting... Your species and the many others that have been here in the Expanse have been quite overwhelming as well in some ways. But the way I see it, 
technology can be just as valuable, if not more, than people. So I'm going to turn this whole diplomatic thing into an extended task. Ooh, okay. Um, because, you know, diplomacies are not are typically not won or lost based on a single role, but may be something that happens over time. Sure. Uh, so this is going to be a work track of 20, because you're trying to change an entire, a species entirely, or entire eh, economic outlook. There is going to be a difficulty of of three. Uh, there's going to be high resistance because of aforementioned species. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say resistance of three. And okay. There's going to be a magnitude of three. All Lots right. of trees, apparently. So this is going to be a uh, presence command insight. Uh, let's see. So the first one you're trying to figure out is to how to actually properly communicate with this individual. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to probably be a insight plus command role. Okay. Um, difficulty three, as I believe I mentioned. Uh, if Demos wants to assist, he certainly may. Uh, otherwise, the uh, the captain is kind of on his own here. Oh, let's see here. Uh, I think I have a couple focuses here. Uh, diplomacy, galactic politics. Ooh, galactic politics. That's a good one. Shizno, do you think there's any way that Demos could assist me here? <laughs> We're not intimidating him, so I don't really think so. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, I shall take a momentum for an extra dice. Okay. Insight command. And I have a focus. Yeah. Wow, nice. Three successes. Uh, so Alrighty. Roll, uh, roll me a number. Uh, so roll me seven challenge dice, please. Yep. <clears throat> and boop. Okay. That is six. So, so let's go ahead and can we use a momentum to give it piercing? So that would make the resistance one. So mm -hmm. that would be five be work, five. which would be a breakthrough. That would indeed be a breakthrough. So that's going to take the work track down to 15, difficulty of two. And it's a magnitude of two task. So, and that is about as far as you guys are able to get during your first scheduled briefing. Okay. Yep. Cool, cool. As you are leaving, or as you break up for the day, uh, Demos, you are checking your pad for updates from security. And it appears that the sec uh, that your security team arrested the uh, Yelexi. Apparently, he was caught attempting to uh, illegally download tech or technical schematics and uh, attempting to replicate up uh, that attempting to replicate uh, prohibited technology such as weapons um, uh, which caught your security guards so they currently have them in the brig okay uh, I'm just gonna wait for everyone to clear the room like you know the delegates mm-hmm and they do. A couple of things, Captain. Yes. First, the Alexei is in the brig for trying to download schematics on forbidden technology. <sighs> and he'll kind of, you know, essentially, you know, rub the bridge of his nose. And? Well, secondly, isn't technically what you're doing against Starfleet's own prime directive rule? We're interfering with the political workings of a planet that's not part of the Federation. Well, the way I see it... Well, she may not be... vocally telling us... I do believe that... the princess is asking for our help in some capacity and sometimes that brings cause to break that directive I'm going to go deal with the Alexander Brig 
And you do that. <laughs> okay, so... I realize that this story is quickly splintering into four separate scenes with four separate players. I apologize for that. <laughs> no, it's interesting. But it's good to give some players a one-on-one -on -one time, and I was planning to have this with six players, so we're about keep follow the bouncing ball where it leads, and hopefully things will tie up nicely by the end of it. If not, we'll have a time-space rupture. Okay, in the security office... <clears throat> Okay, he's not here. Demos and Midas are there. As you uh, enter the security office, Demos, uh, you're met up with Lieutenant uh, Tiam. Sir, here's a list of everything he tried to access and download. Most of it's pretty straightforward, what most visitors want. They just want the welcome package. However, he quickly turned into, once he found out what the replicator could do, here's a list of everything he replicated, mostly food. Some clothing. He attempted to find a decent amount of contraband Tholian silk. Or, not contraband, sorry. Knockoff Tholian silk. And then he started downloading. And then he attempted to start downloading um, weapons. And that's when our security system kicked him out and notified us. Has he said anything to you? Uh, no, sir. He hissed and spat a p what appeared to be a small stream of acid at the force field, but doesn't, according to our resident nurse, doesn't look like he can do that any more than once an hour. So I don't think you have to worry about getting scarred, sir. And have the princess been made aware of this? Uh, no, sir. As this was a security matter, you were the first person that we talked, that we let know. Very well. Can you go grab her for me, please? Yes, sir. I shall bring the princess right away. With that, he'll trundle out. As you wander into the brig, uh, the final cell is there is a slouching snake like being. There's. Uh, tail is coiled up around one of his feet as he's just sort of lounging at the bed. He looks up. Ah, the metal one. You're the one that... Uh, Demos, right? I do apologize. I if I have, I, have a pro I have apparently broken some law on your station. And I wish to apologize. Uh -huh. His forked tongue flickers in and out. So, tell me, did you think it fine to try and replicate or download weapons data on your world? That normal? Where I come from, every opportunity is grasped or regrets, or regretted that we did not grasp at it. Those that succeed at, when taking risk, rise to power beyond all imagining. Those that, those that fail know are comforted that at least they tried and those that don't could only are left only to imagine for what it is worth sir i was only attempting to rep to acquire some handheld weapons we were going to make a run for the gate and i wanted protection from whatever lay beyond well Look, I don't like the fact that you start trying to download tech that's not yours to begin with, because it can lead to a whole host of headaches. Secondly, you put me in a predicament now, and it's going to be awkward for your princess to have to deal with. This might not be something in her favor to gain whatever she wants. Probably it's going to actually hurt her cause now. Um, he actually looks crestfallen at the mention that you, that his actions have hurt the princess. That was not my intention. I am still so used to thinking for myself. 
I am not used to having others to care for. Well, I want her to have a talk with me first about this. She uh, will be notified of this. On cue, Mr. L L L ah, Lieutenant TM wanders in, and trailing behind him is the princess. Uh, you receive the signal that she is waiting for you in the lo or in the lobby area. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, turn around before you can say anything and head on out and go greet her. As you approach, uh, TM just goes at attention, sir, uh, goes back at ease, and heads off to do whatever it is that extras do when they're not on stage. Princess, Princess. Ia, uh, she, uh, she nods and closes her eyes ever so slightly. Uh, Lieutenant Demos, I, um, I was led to believe that there has been a problem. Yes, your comrade decided to access files and systems of the station illegally, and now he's in the brig for it. Uh, she gnashes her teeth. Damn it, pulse of you, Lexi. On one hand, it's why I love him. On the other hand, he's just made this so much more difficult, hasn't he? In one hand, yes. Theoretically, this would be a snafu in your quest for change. But on the other hand, that's just a theoretical. You will be released, but replicators in your quarters will be deactivated. And food will be brought to you guys by individuals through the staffing of the station I don't think anyone has to know about this do you agree she nods vigorously yes I believe that that would be for the best well thank you for coming down to ask such a hypothetical question to me and thank you so much for posing the hypothetical in the first place I shall return to my quarters and I expect that Iraq or Erast will find his way back eventually. He will, and I'll make sure he has some food with him. And if you need some alone time, the guards will stand a few feet away from the door. Hmm. If you have to persuade him not to do anything hypothetical again. <laughs> hmm. I. She's she nods or she's ah she smiles with a half grin. I appreciate that, Lieut Lieutenant. And you can she, call me Demos. Of course, Demos. And she'll wow. she'll turn around and head out. Her uh, dress trailing behind her. I'll stand up and uh, go back out to the front there and look at TM. Look, TM with me. Yes, sir. Walk back into the brig. You're like, TM, you're just going to forget what you see in the next 30 seconds, okay? Uh, sir, I have absolutely no idea what I'm told I'm supposed to forget. Perfect. Yeah. And he's just going to stand in front of the force field. And he's going to get very close to it, mm -hmm. deactivate it, and step in, and he's going to tower over. He's like, you are free to go, but I will warn you, you disappoint her while on this station. You will not only have me to worry about, but every other guard here for what you tried to do. Am I clear? Uh, roll me presence plus security, please. And if you have that, ha if you happen to have that intimidation focus. Mm, I don't. <laughs> All right. But... I will uh, give you three threat. Ooh, I like threat. Works for me. <laughs> uh, difficulty two, I should say. Okay. I'm yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That is the two successes you need. Uh, he, uh, you see him visibly get shorter as his spine compresses. 
and he slinks back into himself. His eyes attempt to narrow in what you believe is a standoffish gesture, but he can't hold that pose for very long. I understand. I I will behave. I will not touch anything else. Good. TM here will take you back to your quarters after a quick stop at the Replomat to get you some food. You treat her like a princess, you hear? Yes. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Only the best for her. Yes, only the best. Yeah. No more wandering fingers now. As they uh, wander away, you hear him inquire about this pet store. And TM saying, no, absolutely not. I have heard what you can do with the live animals. I'm proud of TM for saying no. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, they are competent Starfleet officers everywhere. They're only incompetent when the story requires them to be. Rami. Yes, Lieutenant Demos. The incident log with our guest. Delete it. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. I am marking it as archived and marked for deletion upon next data purge. And also make sure that the replicators in the quarters that we've assigned them are disabled at lockdown and hardline cut. I have already disabled them and have dispatched maintenance team f Alpha 4 to perform the hardline disconnect. Excellent. Do schedule a reconnect once those quarters are vacated. Already planned, sir. And is Mayloon free? I didn't get a chance to see him earlier. Ah, yes. Mayloon is... Indeed. Mayloon is in his... Uh, Mayloon is in the artificial intelligence bay, or area. And she's... Come to think of it, there's not many other places on the station he could be. I wanted to make sure. I'll be dropping by to see him sometime soon. Of course. And I do, out of care, out of game, I do apologize that scene that didn't happen there earlier, Demos. I got no caught worries. up in things. No worries, we got a spooky ship. Yes, we had got a spooky ship. Speaking of spooky ship... Dun, dun, dun. Uh, back in Astrometrics. Uh, Lieutenant Keevan, you feel the brushing of cold air on your neck. And... <laughs> You're not entirely sure. You then look around, and Usha's back. Usha, you're really going to let somebody know when you're coming back into a room. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm quite light on my feet. Anyways, I've... I've done what I can. There's something about this ship, but it doesn't seem malicious. I mean, I won't disagree with you. I won't necessarily think something is malicious unless it shows malicious intent. However, something just seems off around. Well, it could be, sir, that there's only six of us on board a ship that has a typical crew complement of about 200. That could be very true, but I think we need to see about finding out if there's any log still from the purging they did with the Volk. Mm. I'll see what I can find, sir. I'm... If I may make a suggestion, Lieutenant Commander, while it may be a slower investigation, if the logs don't exist here, perhaps they've been downloaded at the Vulcan shipyards. That's going to be quite a trip, but yeah... yeah. I'd probably yeah. agree going to the source. I, well, I was just suggesting a data transfer and, you know, picking up the Midas array and calling them, but if you want to take one of the Slepnirs and a QSD jump, I'm sure the captain would be okay with that. I think. I'm not the captain. If it comes down to it, but maybe at this point, especially... Especially with what we otherwise already learned, so maybe we do just need to contact the contact them. All right, I happen to know a girl. 
I can I can set you up. She might be your type. <laughs> uh, let's not get started on that one. Mm. By the way, Mr. Keevan, how many wives do you have? I prefer not to answer that question here. That's more of a um, in the eclipse kind of answer. Ah. Sorry, sir. It's, like I said, six of us on board a ship meant for 200. Just trying to fill the silence, sir. Ah, no worries. I have a feeling something was just posted to Discord. Just a little bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, topics yes. for our next role play light or our role play or plot light episode. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, figure out everything about Keevan by getting him drunk. <laughs> I look forward to those days. They're going to be good days. <laughs> so. On the bridge, uh, Mr. Dolrum. It's been about six hours, and this time the warp core is properly started. Um, the ship appears to be f fully operational in every, or at least back to factory spec. You're pretty sure Keevan could probably tweak those settings given en enough time and test runs, but the system does appear to be operational. Seeing that everything's operational, I tap my comm badge. Still room to Keevan. Keevan here, Commander. What's up? According to every readout I have here, we are fully operational. He, Keevan's going to confirm that with the console he's at at Stellar, Navi uh, at Stellar Navigation. Okay. Uh, roll me an inside engineering test, and this time the ship can assist with computers plus engineering. Uh, this will be a difficulty of one. I got the ship. Okay. Nice. Going to end up okay. two, two momentum. Two momentum. Fantastic. That's a good roll, too. Okay. The uh, Keevan in astrometrics, you're t you tie the ship, or you tie the computers into the engineering system, uh, one of the auxiliary panels, and confirm with Tuesday down below, the ship is 100% and ready to fly. Yeah, I agree with you, Commander. Everything does look good from down here, so do we want to... Do we want to just report to the captain and call it a day, or do we want to try to t do we want to take it for a quick spin? Well, sir, you are the commanding officer of the ship. <sighs> yeah, you never do something if you haven't tried it once. Um. Let's take her out. You know what? I will have myself and Usha ret um, return to the bridge with you, and we'll take it up. May I suggest we get mud, because I am not flying the ship. I will scratch the paint. <laughs> All right. Now, what are the engineers? Well, I guess they'll be in engineering doing engineering things. Most uh, likely. Okay. Uh, keeping, keeping eyes out for creepy messages on consoles, you know. Actually, yeah. Uh, so, Mr. C or Captain Crawford, you're about to enter the second negotiation or second round of negotiations with Prince, Ox Prince Aksha when you get a yeah. call from Lieutenant Commander Keevan. This is Captain Crawford. Go ahead. Captain, it's Lieutenant Commander Keevan. Um, things are looking good here on the air end, so we're going to take it out of the system, out of the station, and maybe just out towards the array if it's okay with. Um, sure, just to see if everything's up to par, but 
make it brief. Will do. Captain Keevan out. <laughs> All right. Hey, and Captain. as he signs off, he's just doing his grin. I'm just like... <laughs> Golrum face palms, and I bet Crawford is confused by that sta- statement. It's like, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, five minutes later, David, uh, Ensign David Mudd runs onto the bridge still pulling on his command tunic. Mud, you didn't necessarily need a rush here. Uh, Sorry, sirs. Uh, When I heard the phrase new ship and do you want to fly it, I could not help myself. Fair enough. Energetic. I I have no problem with that. He sits down at the chair, spins it around, and just runs his hand across the console. Okay. I might just realize this has been reset to factory specs, so... Play around with it as you need to. Yes, sir. The one size fits all, but actually doesn't fit anyone settings. (laughs) I like that. Oh. Give me a, give me a half hour, sir, and I'll have this thing de- uh, doing barrel rolls, flying through the nebula. That'll be fun. <laughs> Mr. Mud, have you ever thought about, you know, co-opting yourself to engineering at all? No, sir. Can't even pay. They, they even ex- they expect me to maintain my own shuttlecraft, sir. Uh, that's enough engineering for me. Fair enough. As Keevan attempts to build his empire under the nose of the commander. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, no, 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 no. I just need some, you know, well-positioned foot soldiers. That's it. Ah, yes. You realize this isn't the mirror universe, right? Or is it? Hmm. (laughs) Right. Let's, Let's cut that scene before it gets too conspiratorial (laughs) and cut back to the next wave of diplomatic negotiations where captain with the aid of a well-placed ferengi ambassador or ferengi consulate down in the ferengi emporium who has given you a few tips at a at a very good price Uh, you find yourself armed and ready to come back to the di- diplomatic negotiations, which is going to be the second role on the work track. Okay. And this will be, what, probably Presence Command this time? Uh, yes, this is going to be Presence Command. Difficulty 2 okay. this time. Yeah. Um, I will uh, use my point of determination here. Yeah. Okay, going to knock it out of the park. And what value yeah. are you tapping? Um, it's either one or two, because since we're bending it a little bit, one is either both body and mind are important in leadership, mm-hmm. or some rules are made to be broken, even the prime directive. Oh, I forgot you still have that as a value. So yeah, that's either one of those is going to work okay. Cool. So there's the two successes yep. I need already. So this is just icing on the cake. I like cake. <laughs> Obviously, uh, galactic politics is a focus. Naturally. Yeah. Okay, so that's three successes, which is one momentum. Cool, cool. Uh, so seven challenge dice, please. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, wow. We nice. don't even need to... Sh- Let's let's use wow. momentum just to save off two resistance so we get a little more work track done. So it'll do eight work. Eight work, okay. Okay, so that's going to be now seven left. Difficulty of one. Task changes to a magnitude of one. Uh, you wow and dazzle them. Uh, so you do realize that this is... While you're not ignoring the Prime Directive, you certainly do have it at the forefront of your mind, but you also have the various uh, teachings of Kirk and Sisko when he's feeling badass 
<laughs> I'm very much towing the line of the Prime Directive right now. Yeah. I mean, they are tech. They are a foreign power that you have no, you know, ju- jurisdiction over, and they are, you are attempting to negotiate a deal with them, but at the same time, there is a person who was under threat and had requested your assistance. So. Yeah. I mean, so it's sort of okay. <laughs> it's sort of okay. And it's probably... It's at least enough to raise an eyebrow from a certain Andorian admiral who basically reports to an admiral that says, don't meddle. But, you know, it's a thing. It's fine. It's a thing. Yeah. I wouldn't call during... this totally meddling. No. Nah. I, it's all happening. During this phase... Not changing a whole entire culture's way of how they do things. Yeah, that's not meddling at all. No. Well, maybe I mean, not, just changing all I'm really, doing. all I'm really doing is telling them, trading people isn't that cool. <laughs> or maybe trading... which we already kind of said. Yeah. Well, yeah. Possibly trading people under this certain situation isn't cool. But so, you yeah. find a new way, and it might work out a little better. Yeah, I would essentially just, uh, you know, during this phase of negotiations, sort of teach them about like how different uh, civilizations on a very old Earth in this universe's history, you know, essentially used, like, bartering systems in order to... They traded goods for other goods, and those goods weren't necessarily people, and it's basically a bunch of other things. Basically trying to convince them that what would be their equivalent of almost... Not necessarily human trafficking, but it's not necessarily okay. Right. Trading people's bad. <laughs> Very well. Yeah. Overall, things are going well. Um, Demos, you are sensing an era of cautious optimism from Princess Ia. Um, she has still made it staunchly clear that she does not wish to go back to the Ulke. Uh, she's tasted this way of life and wishes to explore it with her partner. And But Prince Aksha doesn't seem to give that mind right now. He's more interested in saving the trade deal. And if there's a way to... If there's any way for him to come out of this with his... Uh, his, uh, his heat organ intact. They call it the ventral organ. The lines that run up and down their head are for perspiration. And heat release. Hmm. Uh, um, something Dr. Sulkin would probably have told you if his player was here. But. So, that overall lasts about another hour, in which case it's time for a scheduled break. And Mr. Demos, I believe you had a scene in the AI lab. Yeah. Okay. Now, you'll have to refresh my memory because you said you don't. You need to think you brief, so how does this work with you and an underwater environment? An EVA suit. Okay, full EVA. Gotcha. You hiss through. Uh, you feel the EVA suit. Uh, pressure against your skin as, it, as water rushes against it. And Midas doesn't seem to care about this. He activates aquatic mode. And starts buzzing through the water, leaving a jet of bubbles behind him. Yeah, a little propeller comes out of his back. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, already, um, Meilun has been alerted that someone is coming, and is already at the door, awaiting your arrival into his chambers. Mr. Hello, Demos. Meilun. Mr. Demos! Welcome, welcome, welcome! I do not know why you are here. I have had no intruders. Except for some krill. But I ate them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good to hear. You're keeping on top of things. Um, I have a question for you. Ooh, a query. I love queries. Rami's programming. He nods. Yes. How secure is it? Physically secure. You have seen to the defenses you... You have seen to the physical sec- securing of this chamber uh, quite well. Uh, blast-proof doors, energy-absorbing absorbs- shields, highly, re- highly, uh, 
highly dense uh, new, highly dense alloys that make up the core's uh, outer casings should pre should protect it from structural collapse uh, data wise he nods as, or he pauses as he collects his thoughts yeah, she boasts an extremely robust encryption system that has not been cracked by any federation penetration testers nor any nor has it been penetrated by any other foreign power that we are aware of indeed the Whoa. encryption key changes every hour there's been a couple of instances where one her physical appearance was changed but i'm just assuming that was due to the emitter is being adjusted not her actual programming yes i i take shame that that has happened and will take steps to and have taken such precautions to uh, before her image projects we will we run an an app we run a an integrity check of the emitters that are to project her. If there is a flaw in the emitter, she is not projected or uses a redundant emitter. Well, the main reason why I'm down here is because you were probably aware or at least heard that we had some issues with data not being recorded by Rami due to certain commands being issued. The, the, it, his uh, tail waves up and down slowly Yes, I am aware. I am. There's, sadly, those protocols are introduced beyond my initial sphere of control. Could find yeah, I wanna... ways around if, with the proper orders. Well, I believe, with the security of the station being paramount and all the lives aboard being paramount to being kept safe. Who would have to give these orders to you? I would require uh, to modify the to ah, to modify Rami's core stru core programming beyond what is a traditional break fix method. I would require a change uh, approval from the captain. I could I could whip I ah, if you are inter if you could please provide me a scope of a project work. I would be more than happy to draft a technological a hypothetical technological solution and present it well i had one idea and he's just gonna look at midas and he's like you know how i have him around right little buddy why yes he's very adorable he goes up and bats at him with his snout midas buzzes away <laughs> i quite like him can i have one of my own well, you'd have to become an exo, and if I ever find my people, maybe. Don't think we've ever made a dolphin exo, though. Mm. Hmm. First time for Interesting everything. question. Yes. Yeah. But, um, I was thinking that we give Rami a secondary AI. This one is just fact-finding and verification. Monitors all income information... And any information that is subsequently blocked by a command, a black box protocol is kicked in, and all that information is recorded into a specific on-site location that's not going to be tampered with. That way there, if someone were, let's say, using Starfleet Intelligence commands in a negative method to sabotage or damage this station, this black box can record any and all information and potentially be used to help capture and detain said intruder. Ah. Ah. A, wa a watcher that watches the watcher. Yes. Hmm. An interesting idea. One that would not technically interfere with Rami's operating system, but I would have to make a minor modification with her input-output algorithms. Uh, change requests would still be needed, but the uh, captain seems friendly. I would of course. Uh, go ahead. Of course, information would only kick into the black box once a command was told to, let's say, run a blackout subroutine. Of course, specific triggers. Yes. Very interesting idea. Very similar to the EMH program that monitors the health or the EM 
the EMH uh, auditing program of the original Mark Ones. Yes, very interesting. I th very interesting hypothesis, Mr. Demos. Well, if you could come up with something, I'll present it to the captain and see if we can implement it. Ah. If I may make a request, Mr. Demos, I'd like to attend the demonstration myself. It's would be an, it would be a good reason to and he pauses, stretch my legs, as it were. And his Certainly. mouth opens up as if he made a the best joke in the world. <laughs> I'll I'll give a little chuckle because it was it was humorous to me. <laughs> I was like, well, don't feel be yeah, don't be a stranger. You can come down to the security anytime you want. I believe you have your own EVA suit for walking around the air, right? Oh, of course. I would have gone absolutely stir crazy if I was just confined to my quarters and this air this deck. I am thankful that Rami has given me a a full section of the ship and has flooded it for my enjoyment. Yeah, that's good to hear. And the last thing is, I want to find out... Well, first, I need to have certain programs disabled within my quarter. Do you think you could help with that? Because they're phrased triggered. I would... Uh, he is normally upbeat, chirping, uh, drops a couple decibels, and slows a bit as he begins to get a little bit suspicious. I will attempt to do what I'm able to do. No promises, of course. It, it's just I hate having to deal with the lockdown. I had to deal with it a bunch at the Academy because I didn't realize it was bad to say. And he's just going to look around for a second and he's like, Midas, change your display to that symbol. Uh, he changed... That is the Greek symbol Omega. I'm unentirely certain why that would be a problem. Well, if you say that to the computer and then followed by, let's say, a particle, a lockdown kicks in. I need that disabled in my quarters. Well, that seems like a very odd computer glitch. I shall, I shall work with the, I shall work with Rami to attempt to understand why this pro, why this protocol is engaged. If, if you could, if you could just focus on disable, I shall try. Side project, of course. Uh, Mr. As as you turn to leave, he chirps once. Uh, Demos. Yes. I have to ask, as you and I are the only representatives of our species on this station. Are you lonely? I'll just look at him for a second. Incredibly so. I feel like a great large portion of me is gone. But at the same time, I have hope that I'll find them. He... You were lucky, though. You have people back at home where you can contact. I just have static. His snout turns a small, uh, the part uh, part of his mouth turns downwards in a small frown. For what it is worth, it doesn't matter how far away they are; it is that they are not here. And with that, yeah. and with that, he will go and and play, try balancing a ball on his nose. <laughs> Ha! GM can play deep, too, with uh, Dolphin. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, we are watching from... Uh, we are watching from the outside of the station, where, the for the first time, under temporary command of Captain Keevan, the USS Ariane departs under its own power. And at this point, um, if whoever someone wants to play Mr. Mud, and they could roll me a control plus contest. 
at difficulty one. Who has rolled the least today? <laughs> I don't. Doubt I would it. actually make the argument for you, Dolrum. <laughs> It's going to say I haven't rolled, like, I rolled one thing today as an assistant. Yeah, go for it, man. Yeah, yeah go for it, for mud. <clears throat> Just don't uh, screw him up. Control con. <laughs> control con. Uh, and or the Arion can assist with engines plus con. <clears throat> and this is a scene what? change, so you lose one momentum. Okay, what's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty of one. And that would be two successes from Mr. Mud. And what does the ship roll? Who's got the ship? I I'll have... grab the ship. All right. Captain Keevan has the ship. Uh, what am I rolling for the ship? Engines con. Have we given an activation to Mud, by the way? Uh, no. Not yet, nope. Ship isn't helping any. Nope. Ship needs to be shooken down. Mm-hmm. The ship does indeed need to be shaken down. <clears throat> or exercised. <laughs> Could be a bit of both. Uh, <laughs> we get a momentum out of that, so... Yep. Okay. Uh, the ship has successfully left dry dock. Left, leaves the station. And this is the first time you get a good glint of the uh, Ulki cruiser. It's a scale 6 ship. And it is gleamingly white. It catches and reflects all the uh, cacophony of lights cast by the angry nebula and the subspace tear that the uh, transwarp hub is connected to. Well, Mr. Keevan, where do you order the sh where do you order the Arion to go? Um. You know what? We're gonna go ahead and just do a weaving and wobbling, wobbling around the Janus Three. Oh, interesting. Okay, uh, set a course for Janus Three, the giant platinum head. And it better not be staring at me again. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of always staring because its eyes don't actually blink. As we yeah. get close to it, it just says, "Show me what you got." <laughs> Don't give the GM hints. <laughs> oh boy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anyways, um, okay. So if you're going to be giving the ship a bit of a stress test, this is going to be a uh, daring plus contest from Mr. Mud. Uh, difficulty two. Uh, ship again can assist with engines plus con. I'm going to spend a momentum... Well, never mind. Oh, yeah! <laughs> but you got to succeed, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am going to sp spend momentum for a third die. Okay. Just because it gives me a reroll. Fair enough. And yes, I have a focus. Well, it's a good thing you took that. Um, care to do a reroll? Sure. Daring. Con. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, so yeah. grand total of five successes. So three momentum, so we get two, we bank two. Yep. Uh, so, Mr. Mud, as you are flying the ship, uh, you take it a little closer to the platinum head than you were initially planning. Oh, but... I have close combat maneuvers. Oh, yes. Um, You're when... in precision flight control. When all of a sudden a sharp gravity or gravimetric shear um, buckets or buffets the platinum head and s brings it dangerously close to your ship. Um, but before you can react, uh, you swear that uh, the ship's auto uh, thrust, auto uh, reaction, th or that the ship's reaction control thrusters kick in before you actually activate them.
Kiva and Indolrum will look at Mud, and he has like a very puzzled look about him. Yeah, yeah, Kevin's kind of sweating like, ooh, okay, that was close. It was a little closer than expected. Well, the closeness was planned. However, it seems like the ship reacted without me even reacting. That's excessively interesting. Almost seems like a ghost in the machine. You know, if the computer core... I'm wondering if there's something in the computer core. Because if it's auto-reacting like this, it's almost like the ship has become semi-autonomous. Yeah, that could be it. Uh, we're definitely going to need to get those logs from the Vulcan. Something is up with this, and we need to figure out... It might not be haunted as much as it might be possessed by a sentient um, intelligence. Not necessarily possessed in a bad Right. By chance, does the ship have an AI core? Uh, no, the AI cores are... Nope, you would need a talent for the AI core. And this ship does not have that. Also, I believe it's only available to scale 6 and above. Or maybe you had to have computers. Anyways, yeah, your ship doesn't have that. Okay. <clears throat> Highly intriguing. Mr. Mud, why don't we go ahead and get this ship back to the station? Aye, sir. Setting courses. Alright. So, we cut back to the captain who is staring down Prince Aksha in the la in the conference room over a deck of cards oh. i i am amused by this playing blackjack prince political cards yes. you know well you know something to break the tension and make this scene slightly different from the last couple <laughs> you know good scene telling no don't have the same scene three times in a row Anyways, Prince Aksha looks at them. Hmm. I believe I have Rummy. Indeed you do. Yeah, that's... Uh, Demos, you would... He does indeed have Rummy. The problem is, is that they're playing Blackjack, so the rules <laughs> of the game are quite... Li are not... He doesn't have a gr firm grasp of the game, but anyways, he oh, sorry. just looks at him because he's not playing. He's just like, okay, that's a thing. Trover will kind of just do the whole like, if Demos is speaking, the whole like hand thing in the neck, like it, it's fine. <laughs> Let him think he's winning. <laughs> Uh, so, if I could ask for um, one, let's have a daring plus command test from you, please, Mr. Crawford. Oh, boy. As you try dun, dun, a dun. gambit with mixing cards and diplomacy. Uh, work track is a little ways up there, so as a refresh, it is this one. Work track seven, difficulty one. Mm hmm. And you have a lot of momentum. Yeah. Five momentum. Um, I'm going to take... Yeah, I think I'm going to take three momentum for two extra dice because my daring is not high. All right. Uh, my daring command is a 13. All right. Let's roll a royal fizzbin. Uh, diplomacy still applying as a focus here? Yep. Or galactic politics, either or. Yep. Beautiful. I feel like and one of the same. Ooh. And that's three successes, so two more mo uh, two momentum back. Alrighty. And roll me some challenge dice, please. Beautiful. Nice. Uh, uh, let's shave off of momentum, because then we complete the work track, and we get a breakthrough and all that fun stuff. Yes, uh, you complete the work track, you have a breakthrough. 
um, in discussing politics, economics. Yeah, at this point, no one has noticed that Dr. Sulkin has implanted a small microtransmitter in your ear, and you are receiving <laughs> instructions real time from a particularly friendly Ferengi. Again, only a small, modest cost. You know, <laughs> royalties to the station uh, from the uh, Emporium have dropped by 2% for this fiscal year. But, you know, <laughs> you think it's probably a good enough deal for, you know. Uh, and in the end, how do you wish to resolve this debate? How do you wish to resolve this, Mr. Crawford? Hmm. It's a good question that I wasn't necessarily thinking about. Um, I could tell you how it might be resolved, but you're the captain, so a final choice should be up to you. Yeah. He'll sort of fan the cards he has out. So, after our negotiations prince aksha what are you thinking about what i proposed My. about trading technology rather than your sister in this case it will be difficult to get my father not by blood but you know my owner to agree to such terms however if he could be if he is w willing to part with some of his influence and potentially gain new influence out of the deal and as far as the people are concerned princess ia is out of ulke territory so as long as she doesn't make some sort of triumphant return with much fanfare or demand her old station back her old roles I believe that this is the best compromise he says with a bit of a shudder one could imagine and Crawford will sort of you know do like a fairly lighthearted like half spin towards Princess Ia in his chair and just sort of gives her like a half cocked grin that just says, Well So in other words, I am not allowed to go home. I cannot see any of my blood sisters or family again. But on the other side of things I have an entire galaxy to explore with my partner. What more could a girl want? <laughs> as far as I'm well... concerned, I got everything out of this deal. <laughs> she looks smugly at... Uh, Ka she, ah, she looks very smugly at Prince Aksha, who just sort of glowers. Oh, I'm glad that you've been able to come to some kind of compromise yes now I believe it best that I leave before my former brother is given a chance to leave just in case I'm uh, Iraq had has told me such tales of what might lie beyond the gates and quite frankly I'm very interested to find out if any of it's true Demos, please accompany me to my shop. Well. Yeah, I'll be your escort. And with that, they make to leave. Uh, Prince Aksha just shoot. If his eyes could shoot lasers, they would be shooting lasers. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, Captain. Yeah, says Prince Aksha. I was really hoping that you would just tell her to get on with it and just do what's best for her people. But I can see that individual individuality plays a big role in your Federation's policies. 
and we'll have to keep that in mind in, in future dealings. Indeed you will, Prince. Now, before we... Now, as there is no pressing need for me to tell my father, my, my owner, bad news, may, I, have, I would like to experience this holodeck again. Of course, is there a certain program you were looking at? Well, the Ferengi have told me something about Vulcan Love Slave. I'm not sure I'll be joining you for that specific program, but you are free to enjoy that on your own. His, his smile goes wide as we bring the scene to a close. Uh, is there anyone, does anyone have anything else they wish to do? Perhaps a briefing with the captain and acting captain? Not a bad idea. Okay. <laughs> so, as Prince Aksha enters into what I'm sure is going to be a very memorable experience that will never be shown on screen. <laughs> uh, Captain Crawford, uh, Lieutenant Derval reports that uh, the Arion is back in dock and both... Uh, bah, uh, both Commander, yeah, both Commander Dalrum and you—you you can even hear that he has a raised eyebrow. Acting Captain Kivon uh, would wish to see you. Okay. Um, thank you, Lieutenant Rami. Yes, Captain. We still have, uh. What were the names of those bottles of alcohol that Crane brought with him? Oh, you're referring to the... Kanar. Kanar, Captain. Ah, yes. The Kanar. Um, have a bottle that sent to Princess Ela's ship. Um, call it a wedding gift. Uh, Rami smiles. Yes, Captain. I shall, I shall, I, I, I shall pass these. I shall pass the order to the services team. Thank you, Rami. Thank you, Captain. And she blinks out just as both Daldrum and Kivan walk into the large conference room. He'll get up, <clears throat> Commander Daldrum, and Captain. With a very much like a question, Kivon. <laughs> Commander Dolrum was nice enough to allow me to use my command codes to activate the Axiom's main system, so. Uh, Arian? Arian. Oh, Ar Arian. It would help um, if you knew the name of your ship. <laughs> sorry, I was thinking about something else. <laughs> Changed the icon. <laughs> Dolrum just smiles. Kivan actually reaches for the communications um, right there on the con on the conference room table and puts a um, communication with the air um, to the air on computer transfer command codes to Deep Space 15 authorization Kivan Omega 642 Delta. Command codes accepted. I much prefer being a lieutenant commander anyhow, at least for now. <laughs> well, Captain, it looks like the um, maiden voyage or the of the Aaron it went well enough. There is a few anomalies in the system that cropped up between us and um, myself and the commander up, you know, in the upper sections, and then with the other crew that we had with us, with um, Chief Neo with us, we had some odd anomalies, but nothing we couldn't really um, identify, nothing that really considered itself to be malignant, so we need to do a little bit of extra testing on the ship, but otherwise, it's seeming like it's good to go. Um, I do want to put in an official request to get the any kind of logs that the Vulcans had kept on the ship when they went ahead and 
um, clean the memory banks of this ship. Alrighty. This seems like it's going to be a much deeper mystery than we ever expected, but I mean, a ship is a ship, and right now that will definitely help us. It actually, when we went to Janus 3, we nearly went a little closer to the planetoid than we wanted to, but it seemed like, according to uh, Mr. Mud, the ship actually started moving itself away <laughs> just beforehand. <laughs> That is before Mud actually hit the buttons to maneuver. Hmm. I see. Interesting, but we'll figure out more about that in due time, I suppose. Yes, we will. But, I mean, it's a sturdy ship and everything looks like it's doing just fine on it. So, did you have anything interesting going on? Um, settled a sibling dispute may have changed how a culture does its economic dealings, but what captain doesn't tow the line of a prime directive at some point? Sounds like an interesting story to have over a drink. That it does. To the eclipse. <laughs> uh, and on that note, we shall call it a session. Um, all righty. So, as always, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for playing. Uh, we will be back. We will be back streaming in uh, probably two weeks' time. There is a possibility I may have to skip that due to some personal business, but we will see what goes on. Either way. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.